Okay. Uh, I really want you guys to give it up for him. He came from Chicago, obviously. Joe Fernandez. Thank you for the energetic intro. Oh man, I came here from Chicago, yeah, and uh, when they asked me to do the show, I said only if it's under TJ Maxx, so here we go. <laughs> My act is sponsored by TJ Maxx, I had that, I said it's the only way I'm contractually obligated to be underneath the TJ Maxx, so this is the only room I'm allowed to play right now. Uh, it's exciting. Uh, I have a friend, man, and she is, uh, she is excited about summer, but she's upset that it's going to come to an end pretty soon. She's trying to make plans. And uh, she called me up, she's like, Joe, last summer we didn't do anything. And this summer, I want to go to a water park. I think we all should go to a water park. And I was like, well, that sounds like fun. Because I've not gotten hit in the face with a Band-Aid in a while. <laughs> like that realization where you're like, this is someone else's diarrhea. I'm just thinking, this is... <laughs> No, it's mine. My bad. Okay. <laughs> I work in downtown Chicago and it sucks because there's a lot of road rage in downtown Chicago. Like, people always use the car horns, but they use it for the wrong reason. It's always out of anger. It's like, God, I hate you. I wish ill will upon your family. But that's not the real reason for a car horn. The real reason for a car horn is supposed to be like, hey. Fair warning, you're coming to light. <laughs> All right, want to let you know. Have a good one. <laughs> so I need to change the sound of the car horn to something adorable, like a cat's meow. Because then people would be so upset and be like, God, I can't believe that guy just cut me off. Meow. <laughs> oh, sweet, now I just want to go home and hold my kids. That was awesome. <laughs> We're from my job, I don't get health benefits where I work. I have to pay for health insurance out of my pocket. I don't know if you know what it's like to pay for health insurance out of your pocket. It's pretty much you pay someone $200 a month for them to tell you they're not gonna help you with anything. <laughs> so that's the thing, they only cover stuff when it's catastrophic. So now I just want to get into a car accident just so I feel like I'm not wasting my money. <laughs> Come up and be like, hey, hey, guess who's paralyzed? You guys owe me some money. I want a fancy wheelchair, one with a whistle. Oh. <laughs> it's cool, man. Uh, unlike when I lied earlier, I've done other shows. And uh, I did a show at a gay bar about two years and five days ago. <laughs> I'm sorry, I meant to say recently. Um, I did a show at a gay bar. And my buddies are super homophobic. They call me up. They're like, so Joe, what are you doing tonight? I'm like, oh, I'm doing this show at Berlin. You guys should come. And they go, Berlin? Whoa, but dude, but isn't that like a gay boy? And I was like, yeah, but you're still straight when you go in. <laughs> like, nothing changes. It's like, go in there, they're going to be like, ID. All right, now fuck this guy. <laughs> Sorry, the only way to get in here is if you fuck this guy, don't get married, and have a talk to your parents and hope they're open-minded. <laughs> There's no cover. <laughs> I did do something super straight recently. I went to a bachelor party. Oh yeah, it was pretty degrading to women. <laughs> the debasement of the opposite gender was, hmm, so choice, you know. But strippers weird me out, you know. So I spent so much time trying to avoid staring at women's chests and not being a pervo. And they're finally like, come on, take a peek. I'm like, oh, I don't know how Susan B. Anthony would feel about this. This is weird, you know. But it's weird because we were talking to the strippers after the show and they were very like polite, nice, down to earth people. And somehow philosophy came up and I was like, oh, you know philosophy? And she was like, yeah. <laughs> what do you think, just because I'm a stripper? I don't know philosophy. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> you got it, that's it. Like, I don't know why that was offensive, but I was politically incorrect on my part to a lady named Licorice. <laughs> Doesn't have a degree in philosophy. Like, it wasn't like I just
generalized her race. I wasn't like, oh, you're Puerto Rican. <laughs> you must not know philosophy. It's like, no! <laughs> you just masturbated in front of 30 guys who were throwing dollars at you in change. <laughs> so I assume you're not familiar with Plato's allegory of the cave. Look <laughs> at I was whipped cream out of your ass. I was like, ah. Does she think therefore she is? Whatever. Party time! <laughs> It's weird because I did that joke one time, these two girls got offended, which bugged me because they weren't even friends. There's a girl in the front and a girl in the back. Uh, and the girl in the front's like, PC police, and one in the back's like, uh-huh. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys talking about? And the girl in the back goes, the term is not stripper, it's exotic dancer. When you use the term stripper, you're being politically incorrect. <laughs> And I was like, maybe politically incorrect, but I'm being correct. <laughs> like, that's what they do. They strip clothes off, therefore, they're strippers. Like an exotic dancer, that's like, hey, we got this chick from Milan to do a fan dance. Like, that's <laughs> an exotic dancer. And not that we shouldn't consider strippers' feelings, but if we did, there wouldn't be strippers. <laughs> Every bachelor party be guys trying to put coats on girls, just like, Shannon, go back and get your degree! <laughs> and I, here's the thing, man, I struggle to get with girls a lot, uh, because I'm a slender man, you know, which I don't go for laughs when I say that, but sometimes it happens. I don't, I don't like saying that, it's kind of like saying, hey, I'm a woman with a wiener. <laughs> but girls always go for, like, bigger, more muscular dudes, but I never understood the appeal of that. Like, what do you see a bigger guy at a bar? Just like, oh uh, yeah. <laughs> he looks like he would be great at domestic abuse. <laughs> if we got into a physical altercation, no way I could defend myself. <laughs> and that is ha. <laughs> so why don't you go for a guy like me? You know, because if we get into a fight, you got a 50-50 shot. <laughs> yeah, he's pissed I'm talking to that guy. We both weigh 120 pounds. Let's roll the dice and see what happens. <laughs> My buddy and I, we did pick up two girls. Uh, we did pick up two girls. And the way we did it, this literally picked up two girls because they were hailing for a cab. We were driving. We pull over and they got in our car. <laughs> and I was like, man, we should just murder you on principle. <laughs> That is crazy. You don't value your safety at all. <laughs> but I did have an annoying experience trying to pick up a girl at a bar. Uh, this happened about, uh, I don't know, two months ago. And uh, my buddy and I were at a bar, and he had a friend there, and uh, her name was Blair. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I wanted to have sex with Blair. <laughs> That'd be fun to see her naked and touch her boobs and stuff. <laughs> but I wouldn't have had that expectation if the fact my buddy David came up to me, he's like, Joe Blair, she's told me DTF, ha ha, yeah. <laughs> but on this night, that meant that she was down to frustrate. Because all we did was make out, which would have been fine, except I already had that build up, you know? So it was kind of like, it's kind of like I waited in line for a roller coaster. <laughs> for like eight hours. And then I get to the end of the line, and the roller coaster doesn't have sex with me. <laughs> but we made out, and that was cool. She did a good job. <laughs> and I told her in the middle of it, I was like, hey, you're doing great. She was like, thanks. <laughs> She kept her eyes closed when we were making out, which I feel is key. Has anybody ever made out with someone who keeps her eyes open? Good, it's the worst. It's like making out with a horror movie. <laughs> it's like your eyes are closed every time you open them. You're like, oh, terrified. It's like, I want to get into this, but I think you're going to shit me at some point, so I can't stop you, creepy weirdo. I, uh, I quit smoking uh, about a half hour ago. And, uh... I don't know, man, it sucks. I do smoke, and it blows my chances with girls a lot. 
Like one time I was making out with a girl and she goes, stop, stop. You taste too much like smoke. And I was like, oh, all right. Um, my dick doesn't taste like smoke. <laughs> still running, so skedaddle. Because if you're not going to suck a dick, get the fuck out of Dodge, am I right? Pound it, you bastard. Oh, and he blew it up, too, all right. We had a whole new level of bro right there. That was crazy. I take girls on dates, though, I do sometimes. You know, I took a girl on a date to a sporting event. Took her to a hockey game this past year. And uh, I didn't realize this at the time, when I took this girl on a date to a sporting event, it meant I was going to spend the next three hours explaining shit. <laughs> we went to a hockey game and right off the bat, she's like, so why are they all, why are they all congregated around the circle like that? I'm like, it's a face-off, Shirley, Jesus! That's like the most basic thing in hockey. So I got the point that I was tired of explaining stuff. And so I started making things up. She's like, so why is that guy going to that little box over there? I was like, oh, that guy's a pedophile. It's a pedophile box, you know? Get caught pedophile in the NHL, they'll put you in the pedophile box randomly for two minutes for pedophiling. Was there a lot of penalties in hockey? You know, so it's fun watching games right now. She's like, look at all the pedophiles. That's not what's happening, Shirley. Also, Shirley's a stupid name for that girl I made up for the joke. <laughs> I didn't sleep around for a while, I did the one night stand thing, and uh, I quit one night stands, I'm done with it. And it's weird when you quit one night stands, because I had to turn a girl down for a one night stand a couple months ago, and when you turn a girl down for a one night stand, they can't comprehend it. But like they just get a confused look on their face. It's the same look that a chip gets when you change up the scientific pattern in the experiment. It's just like, all right. Hitting the button. And this is normally when I get the banana. This is the part where I get the banana. I'm hitting the button that says, I'm so drunk, I don't know where I am, and that normally gets me the banana. <laughs> but the thing I miss least about one night stands is when you're involved well, clearly a one night stand situation, and it didn't happen, and the reason a girl always gives, she'd be like, I can't, and I'd be like, why? And she'd be like, uh. And I just, I want to go on a date first. I think we should go on a date first. And I'm like, well, you see a future here? Based on the 10 minutes of conversation we had over jello shots? Like, let's just go over this. This ain't gonna end in marriage, because it's not the story that I want for my kids. Like, Dad, how'd you meet Mom? Well, I was scraping the bottom of the barrel at a 4 a.m. bar. <laughs> <laughs> Saw your mom had a tattoo on the small of her back. I said, score. 10 years later, couldn't be happier. <laughs> what a relationship. <laughs> I always wore a condom, that was good for me, because I don't want to have a kid. I want an abortion, I guess. I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> it's weird, man. Aborted fetuses... <laughs> Some people think that aborted fetuses are people. And I don't know if that's true, but if they are people, then heaven is gross. <laughs> it's got to be like gum on the sidewalk. It's like, oh, watch your step, Charlemagne. Watch your step. My buddy, he doesn't have sex, and he says it's by choice, which means he's ugly. He says he doesn't have sex by choice, because sex is for reproduction, so unless he's going to reproduce, he's not going to have sex. And I was like, man, the worst part about sex is the threat of a baby. Like, that's the part that scares most people off, because we did it, we beat Mother Nature, we came up with condoms, you put rubber on your dick, game over, we won, yay! I mean, it's so much better than it used to be. The only birth control back in the 1700s, you get a girl pregnant, she'd give birth, you'd be like, all right, put it where it can't breathe. Like, that's all we had. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's a fair enough reaction for that. I don't know. <laughs> so I was picking on, like,
like offensive shit, man. I like it. I think, I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, I did just graduate high school recently. <laughs> like 10 years ago. And the thing that's least about high school is the fact that like your mom jokes would work under any context. Like it didn't matter as long as a high five or like, man, my protractor didn't help me on that math test. Yeah, your mom didn't help you on that math test. Nice test! It was always like a good one. That's why I wish I was a girl. Did you ever get back to the lunch table just like, God, I'm so tired. Yeah, I'm so tired from fucking your dad all night. Not Cheryl. <laughs> You went to, okay. <laughs> There's also every conversation I ever had at lunch in high school pretty much went like this. It was like, hey Joe, hey Jordan. Five minutes of silence go by before someone finally goes, so if you had to choose between fucking a donkey. And everyone in the world would know you as the donkey fucker because they put it on YouTube. Or have sex with your grandma. And only you and her would know. <laughs> but it'd be weird if family reunions. <laughs> what would you choose? And no one's ever like, you sick bastard, what's wrong with you? Everyone's like, good query. That's like, what's the sound of one hand clapping? I get you. <laughs> Then people not only get their answers, they get their rationale behind their fucked up answer. Like, I'd fuck the donkey because I don't want things to be weird with my grandma. Now I'd fuck my grandma because she's going to die soon. Good point. I didn't think about that. <laughs> it's a debate, man. <laughs> uh, anyone here work in the customer service industry? Anyone do that? No, all your dads are rich. Okay. <laughs> cool. I, work, I, I, I used to work in the customer service industry, man. It sucks, because people will blame you for stuff that is not your fault. Like, I was working at a restaurant one time, this lady gave me the, come here, young man, finger. And I was like, yeah, that's what seems to be the problem. She goes, this is the worst lemonade I've ever had in my life. And I want a new one. And I was like, I shot this out of a gun. <laughs> there is no new one. Like, I'm the guy from Country Time back here just, put more sugar in it. People like it bitter in the 20s. <laughs> <laughs> All I do is give you the same lemonade in a different glass as far as it goes. But I was working at this restaurant. It's in downtown Chicago. It's called Timothy O'Toole's. Uh, I've never been there, it's just, if chilies were Irish. <laughs> and I was working there, and I was a host, but I was being jovial, joke around with people, you know. And uh, it was right by Northwestern Hospital, and this guy came in with a neurosurgeon tag on, which by the way, fuck off, you don't need to wear that out. <laughs> like, I get it, you're better than me. You make $8,000 a second dissecting brains, I make $8 an hour saying, you sit here, I'm like, you won! <laughs> so this neurosurgeon comes in, right? And I thought I'd jump around him. I was like, neurosurgeon, huh? He goes, yeah. I was like, you guys ever mess up in brain surgery? They turn to each other and go, come 